my knowledge of Islam through the Gulen movement has uh, greatly increased, particularly um, understanding uh, its desire for dialogue and its desire to interact with with all people. That it's, it's a very embracing, uh, very hospitable uh, religious tradition. the things that they value. My name is Dr. James Puglisi and I work at the campus ministry office at St. Edwards University in Austin, Texas, or a Roman Catholic uh, university. And I also serve on the advisory board for the Dialogue Institute of the Southwest here in Austin. I have not had the opportunity to meet Mr. Galan. I would like to. Uh, he actually lives in my home state, Pennsylvania. Um, but uh, from, the, from the writings I've been able to enjoy from his, uh, that he's written, I've uh, I find appreciation for his, uh, what he, his, the intellect that he brings to the interfaith movement, his um, promotion of uh, citizenship, I believe, of uh, people being involved in their communities, uh, whether it's, you know, from their faith perspective, whether it's Islam, Christianity, Judaism, whatever, but uh, that we bring our values into uh, our life in the community, and then that's a good thing. Um, uh, we are all value-centered people, so I, I find that uh, a very positive thing about him. Um, his own personal history is actually very similar to the, the founder of our university, the religious order that founded our university, uh, both wanting to um, promote education in, in a time of transition within their country um, and, and just wanting to help their country evolve and grow and, and enter into the modern world in that sense. So. Almost amazed that sometimes at the, the, the diversity of people that have been able to come together at various uh, Dialogue Institute um, events, uh, bringing politicians and um, people from the religious community and people from the education community and from the business community uh, all into the same space to uh, enjoy discussions and uh, learn about uh, interfaith dialogue, learn about various religious traditions, whether it's Judaism, Christianity, Islam. Um, just so that um, the ability to bring such a diverse group of people together um, is not the easiest thing to do sometimes. So I've been very amazed uh, uh, at the movement that's been able to accomplish that. I think some of the, the uh, most important contributions that uh, Fethul Gulen and the movement, and particularly in the Austin community, has contributed is the ability to bring a diverse group of people together, politicians, uh, educators, people from the religious communities, um, people from the business community, uh, to bring all those people into the same room to uh, enjoy events around um, dialogue, to understand what dialogue is, to learn about uh, religious literacy, to understand, you know, know a little bit more about Islam, about Judaism, Christianity, whatever whatever the religion is, uh, just incre increasing that religious literacy, which is something that I think is very vital, particularly in the United States. So uh, I think that's one of the, the primary contributions that I've really appreciated. Uh, and I know in, in our community at the university that I work at, just the ability to collaborate and provide opportunities for our students to also enjoy those same type of experiences. And then I think, um, Providing uh, people from here a chance to uh, go to Turkey, to be in a different culture, in a different cultural setting, uh, any time that you can immerse yourself into another uh, environment, another background, it, it breaks down stereotypes and uh, misunderstandings that you have about uh, different places, different cultures, because you get to meet the people. And, and when, you're, when you dialogue with people, you find out that we're, we're all pretty much the same. We're mostly interested about raising our kids, making sure we have a good job, a good place, you know, place for our family to live, those 
the, the things of life. My knowledge of Islam through the Gulen movement has uh, greatly increased, particularly um, understanding uh, its desire for dialogue and its desire to interact with with all people. That it's, it's a very embracing, uh, very hospitable. Uh, religious tradition, uh, which is uh, not always what we hear in the media in the United States. So, uh, I believe, you know, uh, from my experience, it's provided a very moderate view of what Islam is about. And, uh, and it's not just about the, um, the, the teachings and the writings, it's the experiences that I had with those who, uh, in a sense, follow uh, Mr. Galan. Um, when you're in people's homes and you interact with them over a meal, you learn a lot about not just the person, but the things that they value and the things that have informed their values. Um, and so it's built a lot of trust. Uh, so I, I have found um, the, the opportunity to learn about Islam through the Golan movement has been invaluable for me. Um, and, and particularly in my work, where I work with religious diversity within our uh, Catholic campus. I think the role of whether um, Muslims should have dialogue with uh, non-Muslims, uh, I think it's a, I think it's a very important activity. Uh, there's a, uh, one of the leading voices in the United States around interfaith dialogue is a gentleman, Ibu Patel. And I recently heard him quoted as saying, uh, if you're not in a room with somebody that you disagree with, you're not in dialogue. Um, we have to talk with people who uh, believe a little bit differently than us, think a little bit differently than us. Um, it helps us to grow. It helps us to grow individually, as a, as a people, uh, and it helps uh, help those that we're in dialogue with to grow as well. I, I work on a Catholic campus and we're very much involved, very much interested in developing our own Catholic identity as a Catholic Christian. And the more I talk with people of other religious traditions, uh, Judaism, Islam, the more I learn about Christianity. And I think that's vice versa. Um, I remember one of the events that we had with the uh, Dialogue Institute, uh, we had a conference here several years ago and uh, uh, we did a survey of 100 Muslim students and 100 Christian students and uh, we found that the more that a Christian knew about Christianity, the more tolerant they were of, of a Muslim. The less they knew about Christianity, the more intolerant they were of, of the Muslim. For the Muslim, the more they knew about Islam, the more tolerant they were of the Christian, and the less they knew about Islam, the less tolerant they were of Christians. So uh, knowledge is so important to break down um, misunderstandings, both within ourselves and uh, people coming from other traditions. Uh, um, it is, I think it's one of the main doorways to uh, not just religious tolerance, but you know, a world that people live together and thrive together, not just tolerate each other, but actually help each other to grow. I think the use of education um, within the Hizmet movement to um, uh, strengthen their communities is a very uh, important thing. And, and I think um, the ability to uh, create environments where students can uh, advance intellectually, but also uh, have the um, mentoring of values, not necessarily teaching certain things, but just having role models of people that uh, live you know, good lives and have a, you know, a positive influence uh, in how people would live. And uh, I think that's a, an important way to educate. Um, in our tradition, we say you cannot educate the heart without the mind, that the two have to go together. Um, so it's, it's not enough just to teach uh, students skills but you have to teach them, you know, how do you make good decisions about what's the best use of those skills that helps common humanity. Um, so that comes with um, good role models, teachers that are able to model good living, you know, family values, you know, just uh, a way to live in the world. Um, uh, otherwise, you just, you know, you've created uh, people with skill sets, but uh, they may use them for good or bad. The Hizmet movement has been very active in providing you know, relief efforts for people that have been impacted by natural disasters, um, poverty and such. Um, I think for any uh, people coming from any religious community, that's, that's central to who we are. 
within Christianity that, that is central to our work. We, we say a preferential option for the poor. Um, I know in, in Islam it's one of the pillars to, you know, to provide for the poor and the needy. It's because it's, uh, we are all interrelated. Um, uh, one of the um, uh, members of the local community here, uh, I remember him once saying that um, for the Muslim, your neighbor is not the house next door, it's the next 100 houses, meaning there's, there's no end to who your neighbor is. And I, I think that's um, uh, just a, a way to think, a, a way to orient our lives to uh, always be serving those that are our neighbors and that there's no end to that. Uh, we have to, you know, we have to help those that are in need. We give from what we've been given. God has given us things. We need to help those who have not been given, you know, given as much. It's just, um, it's the way to make the world a more peaceful place. Uh, most people, uh, violence comes out of people's desperations and and, um, and manipulation and such. You know, those things can only breed when there's people that are in dire need. So if we can help people in their need, it will have a much more peaceful world. I'm impressed that the movement goes all over the world to p try and uh, provide education where education standards are not very high. We wanted to see that Hizmat change the misconception of many people around the world about Islam. That Islam ha is hating Jews, Islam doesn't like Christians, Islam doesn't like non-Muslims. Here Hizmat basically helped us to change that image.